Hello everybody, I am Dr. Bharti, working as an assistant professor of law at National Law University, Delhi. Today I will be discussing a module on access to justice under constitution of India. The objective of this module is to understand the need of special provision for access to justice in India, to know the different constitutional provision supporting the access to justice in India. In addition to all this, we will also look into the judicial trends promoting the access to justice in India. Peace and harmony is very essential for the growth and development of a nation which can be ensured through fair administration of justice. In a welfare state like India, where people are known for its diversity, it is the obligation of state to ensure equal administration of justice. Equal administration of justice is very essential ingredient of fair administration of justice. To promote equal administration of justice, irrespective of economic or other disability, the concept of equal access to justice and free legal aid emerged. It promotes the saying that justice should not only be done, but seem to be done. The founding father of the constitution of India had taken a positive note towards doctrine of equal justice, which became apparent on the plain reading of the preamble of the constitution. It provides for justice to all in all its form social, economic and political. The preamble promise is further strengthened by Article 14, 21, 22, 32, 39A, 38, 41, 46, 142, 226 and 282 of the Constitution of India. Preamble of the Constitution provides for securing all citizens equality of status and opportunity along with justice, social, economic and political. Both equality and justice are interrelated. Equality promotes justice and justice promotes equality. We cannot expect justice without the support of equality. Equality in a country like India, where difference among people prevail because of social, economic and political factor is a far cry without the support of provisions like equal access to justice. Legal aid bring less advantageous people at par with affluent counterparts so that they could get equal access to justice. Apart from the preamble, access to justice also gets support from fundamental right provided under part third of the constitution of India. Fundamental right ensuring in part third of the constitution are the tool to achieve the objectives laid down under the preamble of the constitution. These are basic and natural rights which are essential for the growth and development of human being which ultimately led to the growth and development of a nation. Article 14, 21, 22, 32 and 226 provides for free legal aid. Article 14 provides that the state shall not deny to any citizen equality before law and equal protection of law within the territory of India. Article 14 uses two expression, equality before the law and equal protection of law. Equality before law is taken from England and equal protection of law is taken from American constitution. Both this term appear similar but they have different meaning. Equality before law provides that everybody is equal before law irrespective of political and economic resources. On the other hand, equal protection of law provides a helping hand in terms of special provision to those people who are at a less advantageous position. So that they could avail the benefit of law as their affluent counterparts are availing and equality before law could be maintained. In India, because of illiteracy, ignorance, poverty, lack of faith in judicial system, people do not get equal access to justice. As their educated and affluent counterparts get. So provision like free legal aid becomes very essential to provide them equal protection of law, which is a fundamental right of every citizen of India. Another supporting provision which is implicit in article 14 is the principle of OD ultram partum. It provides that other party must be heard before deciding a case against him and before passing any order against him. So it is the duty of state to ensure that every person gets fair representation before court irrespective of his means or knowledge. That is why free legal aid is implicit in article 14 of the constitution of India. Another supporting provision provided in the Constitution of India is Article 21. Article 21 provides that life and liberty of a person cannot be taken away except according to procedure established by law. The Supreme Court in Menka Gandhi v. Union of India held that under Article 21, life and liberty of a person can be taken away only according to the procedure established by law. 
the procedure which can take away the life and liberty of a person should be just, fair and reasonable. Any procedure established by law which doesn't provide for fair representation before law cannot be termed as just, fair and reasonable. So, it is not authorized to take away the right to life and liberty as provided under Article 21 of the Constitution of India. So, in this case, it was held that the provision and the procedure which doesn't provide for equal representation before court and which doesn't have the provision of free legal aid to those who cannot afford cannot be termed as a just, fair, reasonable procedure which can take away the right and liberty of a person. The Honorable Supreme Court reaffirmed its stand in the case of Hussein Ara Khatun versus Home Secretary to include right to free legal aid in Article 21 of the Constitution. It was held that the right to free legal aid is clearly an essential ingredient of just, fair, reasonable procedure provided under Article 21 of the Constitution of India. This is a constitutional right of every accused person who is unable to engage and advocate because of his indigency that he should be provided free legal aid at the expense of the state. The state is under an obligation to provide a lawyer to an accused person if the circumstances of the case and the need of the justice so requires, provided accused as an object to it and he accept and agree to be represented by an advocate appointed by the state. Again, the Honorable Supreme Court reaffirmed the obligation of state to provide free legal aid in the case of M. H. Horscourt versus State of Maharashtra by giving a similar decision. It stated that if a prisoner is unable to exercise his right provided under constitution and another statute because of his indigency, then it is the duty of the state to provide him free legal aid. Another issue regarding obligation of court to inform about the right to free legal aid was discussed by Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Subdas versus Union of India. It was held in this case that right to free legal aid is a fundamental right of every accused who cannot afford to hire the services of an advocate and it is the duty of the state to provide an advocate at state cost if an accused person appearing before him doesn't have means to afford an advocate. And this right is implicit in the requirement of just, fair and reasonable procedure provided under Article 21 to take away the right to life and personal liberty of a person. It was also held that this right cannot be denied to him on the ground that he failed to apply for it. The magistrate is under an obligation to inform every accused who appears before him that he has the right to be represented by an advocate at state cost if, the, if he doesn't have means to afford an advocate from his own money. Again, in the case of Muhammad Ajpal Kasab versus State of Maharashtra, the Honorable Supreme Court directed all the magistrates in India to inform all the accused who appear before him the right to free legal aid to which they are entitled to if they don't have means to hire the services of an advocate to represent their case. It was held in this case that the right to legal aid consult and defend by a legal practitioner arises when a person arrested in connection with a cognizable offence is produced before a magistrate. So it is the duty and obligation of the magistrate before whom an accused person is produced to inform him that he has a right to be represented by a legal advocate and if he doesn't have means to hire the services of an advocate then he is entitled to be represented by an advocate which will be hired by the state and state will pay his cost and he need not to pay any cost to be represented by an advocate. It ensures equal administration of justice which is very essential ingredient of fair administration of justice. The right flows from Article 21 and 22 of the Constitution and needs to be strictly enforced. All the magistrates in the country were directed to faithfully discharge this obligation imposed by the Honorable Supreme Court. And if they fail to discharge this obligation, then departmental proceeding can take place against them for failing to discharge their obligation of informing the accused person that they have a right to be represented by a legal advocate at state cost if they don't have money to hire the services of an advocate from their own money. Another issue of representation by a competent advocate was addressed by Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Ranjan Dwivedi versus Union of India. It was held that while it is settled position of law that legal aid to accused person without means in all cases 
trial by court of session is a mandatory constitutional right, it is further necessary that he should be represented by a competent advocate. Because if a person who has been appointed to represent his case is not competent enough to represent his case before the court, then the very objective of appointing an advocate at state expense will be frustrated. So, it is necessary that the advocate which is appointed at state court should be competent enough to represent the case of an accused before the court properly. Indigence should never be a ground for denying fair trial or equal justice. Therefore, advocate competent to handle cases should only be appointed. The problem of inadequacy of competent advocate which can be appointed in cases where accused doesn't have money to hire the services of an advocate of its own was discussed in the case of state of Maharashtra versus Manubhai Pragji Vashi. It was held that to provide free legal aid in true sense, we need to have well-trained lawyers willing to perform free legal aid. It is possible if there are adequate number of colleges with necessary infrastructure, good teacher and staff. Since government is unable to establish adequate number of government law colleges, it is the duty of government to permit establishment of duly recognized private law colleges and afford them grant and aid on the similar lines on which it is given to government law colleges. This would facilitate functioning of these colleges efficiently and in a meaningful manner. These colleges will in turn produce sufficient number of well-trained and properly equipped law graduate in all branches of law. This will in turn enable the state and other authorities to provide free legal aid to those who cannot afford to hire the services of advocate from their own money. And it will ensure that opportunity for securing justice are not denied to any citizen on account of any disability, including his poverty. Another supporting constitutional provision for access to justice is Article 22. Article 22 requires certain procedure to be followed at the time of arrest and detention, which is very basic requirement of just, fair and reasonable procedure established by law to take away the life and liberty of a person. It states that no person who is arrested should be detained in custody without being informed as soon as may be the ground of such arrest and he shall also be informed that he has a right to consult an advocate of his choice. The right to consult and to be defended by a legal practitioner of his choice is a fundamental right of every person without any qualification of affordability under Article 22 of the Constitution of India. Therefore, it is the duty of state to provide legal representation even if a person can't afford to hire the services of an advocate of his choice from his own money. It is very essential for maintaining equal and fair administration of justice. In the case of state of MP versus Subharam, it was held that right to consult and defended by a legal practitioner of his choice is guaranteed with a view to enable the accused to prepare for his defense. This right belongs to the arrested person not only at the pre-trial stage but also at the trial before a criminal court or before a special tribunal and whether the arrest is made under a general law or under any special law. If a state fails to fulfill its obligation of providing free legal aid to those who cannot afford it, which is the fundamental right, the aggrieved party can get it enforced under Article 32 and 226 of the Constitution of India. Article 32 provides the right to move the Supreme Court for the enforcement of fundamental rights provided under the Constitution of India. The Supreme Court shall have power to issue direction or order or writs in the nature of habeas corpus, mandamus, prohibitio, quo warranto and certiorari, whichever may be appropriate for the enforcement of fundamental right alleged to be violated by a person making complaint before the Honorable Supreme Court. This is one of the highly cherished right. It is very important and integral part of the basic structure of the constitution. It gives Supreme Court a status of the protector and guarantor of the fundamental right as it provides for the enforcement of fundamental right in case of infringement. This right puts stress on the obligation of state to protect fundamental rights. It is true that a declaration of fundamental right is meaningless until unless there is effective machinery for the enforcement of such rights. It is the remedy 
which makes the right a reality. If there is no remedy, then there is no right. In addition to Article 32, there lies one more remedy for the enforcement of fundamental right and some other constitutional right as well. This is a remedy provided under Article 226 of the Constitution of India. It has a broader scope for enforcement of right. Under Article 32, a person can only get fundamental rights enforced if they have been violated. But under Article 226, a person can approach the High Court for the enforcement of fundamental right as well as any other constitutional right. In our country, because of poverty, illiteracy and ignorance, people are not in a position to apply for enforcement of their rights and complain regarding the violation and infringement of their rights. So constitutional remedies not only provide for enforcement of fundamental right and another constitutional right, but also facilitates the enforcement of such right provided in the Constitution of India by way of public interest litigation. According to the traditional rule of locus standi, only that person whose right have been infringed can appear the court for the enforcement of his right and for claiming compensation. But as we discuss in India, because of poverty, ignorance and some other factor, everybody is not in a position to approach the court for the enforcement of their fundamental rights and other rights provided under the constitution of India. So this rule of locus standi was liberalized to allow public spirited person, organization to file a case for the redressal of the grievances of poor and illiterate people. This concept of social litigation in India was initiated by Justice Krishna Iyer in the year 1976 in the case of Mumbai Kamgar Sabha versus Abdullah Bhai. The equal access to justice is not only supported by fundamental rights but also by directive principle provided under part 4 of the constitution of India. They are not enforceable like fundamental right, but they are the guiding principle for the good governance of a welfare state like India. Article 38, 39A, Article 41 and 46, though they are not enforceable like fundamental right, have aptly guided the promotion of equal justice in India. It is provided under Article 38 of the Constitution of India that state is under an obligation to promote welfare of people by securing and protecting as effectively as it may a social order in which justice, social, economic and political shall inform all the institution of national life. Article 32 sub clause 2 The state shall in particular strive to minimize the inequalities in income and endeavour to eliminate inequalities in status, facilities and opportunities, not only among individuals but also among group of people residing in different areas or engaged in different vocations. Legal aid comes within the ambit of Article 38 as it diminishes the inequality due to economic factors and try to bring equal opportunity of availing legal services irrespective of their affordability by people. Article 39A provides that state shall secure the operation of legal system which promotes justice on equal opportunity and shall in particular provide free legal aid by suitable legislation or scheme or in any other way to ensure that opportunity for securing justice are not denied to any citizen by reason of economic or other disabilities. Article 39A promotes justice on the basis of equal opportunity. It imposes an imperative duty upon the state to provide free legal aid to those who can't afford it because of economic reasons. The Parliament of India, in discharge of its duty imposed under Article 39A, enacted the Legal Services Authorities Act 1987. This act provides for the legal aid to those who can't afford it because of economic or other factor. Section 12 of this Act has laid down a list of people who can avail the free legal aid at the expenses of the state. The 42nd Amendment, which inserted Article 39A in the Constitution of India, also made some changes in Schedule 7 of the Constitution of India. It removed the entry 3, that is, administration of justice, from state list and it and added it under concurrent list as entry 11A. The objective behind this change is to enable both state and centre to make law on the theme administration of justice. 
earlier it was only within the ambit and scope and jurisdiction of state to make law for the effective administration of justice but now as it has been added under concurrent list on which both center and state can make law so now both center and state can make law for the effective administration of justice in india and which include provision for free legal aid for those who cannot afford it further article 41 requires the state shall within the limit of its economic capacity and development make effective provision for securing right to work education and public assistance in the case of unemployment old age sickness and disability and in another case of undeserved want the article provide for public assistance in case of undeserved want so state is under an obligation to provide for free legal aid to those who because of economic reason are not in a position to avail legal aid for them similarly under article 46 the state is under an obligation to promote with special care the educational and economic interest of the weaker section of the people and in particularly of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe and to protect them from social injustice and all form of exploitation in this way under this article there it has a scope to bring within its ambit the obligation of state to make law for providing free legal aid to weaker section of society including sc and sts so that they could avail equal access to justice which is essential for preventing any sort of exploitation against them apart from preamble fundamental right and directive principle there are certain other constitutional provision which equally support the promotion of free legal aid in india one of such provision is article 282 of the constitution of india it provides that union or state may make grant for any public purpose providing free legal aid is a public purpose which is very essential for the growth and development of a nation so under the purview of this article the union or the state can give grant for providing free legal aid for spreading legal awareness etc which is a public purpose so if a grant has been provided by center or state for spreading legal awareness that can be utilized for conducting legal awareness camps at different places in india and making people aware of their rights it is very essential to make people aware of their rights because if people are aware of their rights then it puts check on the arbitrary exercise of power by the authorities as well as it resist the other people from exploiting the rights of these people similarly article 142 clause 1 has been providing assistance in promoting access to justice in india it provides that in the exercise of its jurisdiction the supreme court may pass any decree or may make any order as in necessary for doing complete justice in any court or matter pending before it article 142 help the supreme court in providing equal access to justice till there was no special enactment for providing free legal in india by effective interpretation and implementation of the existing provision of the constitution which we have already discussed now as we have special enactment like the legal services authorities act 1987 this provision is of much use for the honorable supreme court for the effective implementation of the provision of this enactment if there lies any controversy so that the objective with which this act that is the legal services authorities act is enacted could be accomplished and achieved in real sense to conclude i would like to say that from the discussion regarding the provision provided in the constitution of india it is evident that it has the concept of equal access to justice has sufficient backing and support from the constitutional provision the preamble of the constitution which is the basic structure of the constitution of india provides for equal access to justice in the form of justice and equality the promise of preamble has been further strengthened by other provision of the constitution of india provided under fundamental right directive principle and other constitution provision article 21 and 22 has explicitly covered under its ambit the right to free legal aid with the assistance of different landmark judgment passed by the honorable supreme court the directive principle 
which do not enforceable like fundamental rights provided under article 21 and 22 which now with the assistance of the honorable supreme court judgment include right to free legal aid within its ambit has in its own way contributed in the promotion of equal access to justice in india like provision 39a which had imposed a duty on the state to promote equal access to justice and to ensure that nobody is denied justice because of economic reason has encouraged the enactment of the legal services authorities act which was enacted by the parliament in 1987 this is a special enactment for providing free legal aid to those who cannot afford it because of economic reason or some other reason under article 12 of the legal services authorities act there are list of people who are entitled for free legal aid because of economic reason or some other reason as recognized by the parliament of india sufficient for availing the legal aid in india now equal access to justice is not only a distant dream but has become a reality by the help of the sufficient backing from the constitutional provision included in preamble fundamental right directive principles and the effective implementation of this provision by the honorable supreme court and the special enactment by the parliament of india has effectively discharged its obligation of providing equal access to justice to people in india thank you